The Patia City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. Surfing. I wasn't here for that. I'm, so, I'm sorry I missed that. Uh, Carl Hahn uh, is going to speak to us today uh, on the topic uh, Is there a magic bullet to weight loss? Something. Is there anybody here who overweight? No. Not very many. Uh, okay. Or how and why I lost 96 pounds. Carl says he lost 96 pounds, 43 kilos since retiring in Thailand. So please welcome Carl. He's got a uh, little headdress on. There he is. music for everybody and thank you for introducing me and I am happy to be here today to have an opportunity to speak with all you fine people. Alright, so the topic is, is there a magic bullet? And this is my story. Disclaimer, just like the club does the disclaimer, if you take medical advice from me, you're stupid. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I'm an engineer, so I can put electrical wires together, but see your doctor if you need medical advice. This is purely a presentation about my story. And I'm going to drive the kind lady back here crazy because I like to walk. All right? I think so. All right, so what worked for me, all right, may not work for you. And I said, oh yeah, I'm a fatty, okay, so what's this fatty liver stuff about? And 
I learned about fatty liver, that it was what they call a metabolic syndrome, and that I was going to become diabetic and was probably going to die sooner than I would like to. So far, okay. Then I was told, you got something inside your bladder. You need to go see a urologist and find out what it is. So I went to a urologist, and they took this little interesting thing you see up here, and they looked inside my bladder. Now, gentlemen, you can imagine how that got inside my bladder. <laughs> An experience that was not something I wish to repeat. When they looked inside my bladder, what they found was tumors, what we commonly call cancer. And I said, okay, great. What are we going to do about this? And he said, you're going to come back in again, and we're going to stick a bigger one of those things inside you, and we're going to take those tumors out. And I said, okay, we can do that. Yes. So I learned, starting to study a little bit back then, why there wasn't a cure for cancer. Yeah, it was a big money maker. Now, I don't see Meng here yet. I was going to tell him thank you. I had signed up for the club insurance back when I came, and I was very happy I did because actually the club insurance paid most of this taking out the tumors for me. Not all of it, but most of it. So it's great to have insurance or to have a deep pocket because it wasn't something that's cheap, treating your sickness here. Everybody thinks it's cheap. It's not, not when you get care. So I had my tumors removed, and this is like how I thought I looked when he was done. Now I'm told that I didn't really look like this, but I really felt like this. So didn't have chemo, all right, but I still lost my hair. And speaking of losing my hair, this thing's hot. So I'm going to lose my hair here. All right. And I was fat and happy again. Tumors are gone, no problem. Okay, the modern medical miracles fixed me. I was back to my retired life. All right, out with my friends, eating. But what I didn't recognize back then, and I do now, is that I was still obese. But I wasn't worried. Not then, anyway. So I go for my six month checkup and my good doctor, and he was a very talented doctor, trained in America, come here, did a good job. He said, oh, I think your tumors are coming back. That got my attention because I didn't want another one of those procedures where they went and got that stuff out. And let me back up, during that procedure, I was awake. I got to see what he was doing. Anyway, so what did I decide to do? I decided that it was time for me to take charge of my own health, something I had never done in all my years back in America. I got books, I got internet, I started to study about my own health. What I was most curious about was what caused my cancer, because I asked my good doctor, and he said, it could be any number of things. All right, so I started to study. We've all heard that uh, about BPA, right? And plastics that may not be healthy for you. We probably know that the water you get here isn't so healthy for you. A couple years ago, you heard about even the bottled water may not be so good for you because it had plastic particles inside it. So my decision at that time was spend some money and get a lot of the toxins out of my life, at least the toxins I could control at home. So the plastics went out, the Teflon went out, all right, we bought glass for cooking and storing food, and we got a filter. I know I see some guys in here that have the same filter. All right, we got a good quality filter to filter my water. Even the water we buy in the bottles, I filter through to make sure that I'm not digesting pieces of plastic. The last I heard, plastic doesn't digest. What goes in has to come out somewhere, and I had had a, my fill of things coming out or going in. We also decided that around the house we needed to remove some of the toxins, and we got different cleaning materials to use at home, 
And for those that have hair, like my beautiful wife, all right, we got new detergents and shampoo, shampoos and uh, conditioners that didn't have ingredient lists that had names that were a mile long. If anybody ever picks up what they're using and look at them, you'll sometimes just say, what is all this stuff? So we got rid of most of that and went looking for quality goods for at home. The next part of the journey was I decided it was time to get rid of the empty calories that I had. I was still obese. I, I had to get rid of the empty calories. So this is actually what I did a couple years ago. I went through my cupboards and I put out on the, my tabletop, this is not a fake picture, I took this picture two years ago. I put out on my tabletop all the stuff that were empty calories that I was eating every day again and again and said, no more. All right, I love my Oreos, but no more, okay? They gotta go. So, can you guess why I did that? Anybody? No willpower. No, very good. No willpower, I was gonna eat it if it was at home. But there was another reason, and I want you to hear what Eric Clapton has to say about this. This is an interview he did with Ed Bradley many years ago. I wish I had heard this a long time ago. Drugs and alcohol. I couldn't get through a day without doing something to alter my consciousness. And it started with heroin. It started, no, it started with sugar. Sure. Oh yeah, when I was five, six years old, I was cramming sugar down my throat as fast as I could do it down. Sweets, you know, sugar on bread and butter. I became a confusion because it changed the way I felt. I was addicted to sugar. How many people in here think they're addicted to sugar? Yeah, all right. You get off of it, it's just like getting off of smoking or anything else. You know, you're gonna go through some withdrawals, and I did, I went through withdrawals. I had those days where I went hunting for something sweet around the house. But fortunately, there was nothing there for me to go, and 7-Eleven was too far to go get something. So I got myself weaned of sugar. So I removed all those types of sugars, and you'd be amazed if you ever go and look at nutritional information at Starbucks. I love Starbucks. Not anymore. Now I have black coffee at Starbucks, and I'm just as happy or happier. Candy, love candy. Candy's gone. I don't have any candy around the house anymore. Coke. I was actually with a Diet Coke, and I thought Diet Coke would be great for me. Now I looked at the chemicals and said, this is not such a good idea either. All right, so I got rid of all those. I even made a trip a couple years ago, all the way up to Bangkok when they opened a new Krispy Kreme, just to go get some Krispy Kremes. Now if I'm going to Bangkok, it's so the wife can go shopping. One of the things I learned was that sugar has more names than a tiger on <laughs> And up there in caps is high fructose corn syrup. If you see that, run the other way. It's not healthy for you. But these are some of the names that sugar, that you'll find on ingredients lists when you look. It's amazing how many different names the sugar industry has for sugar. So anyway, I was doing better. Not eating sugars now, got the toxins out of my house, but I was still obese. And this is a picture of me at dinner, and I'm with a couple of my friends, and they can testify, this is me, all right, about two, end of 2016 or so, all right. I was still obese, and I needed to do something. So what did I do? Well, first thing, because I like to read, I bought a book. It says, food, what the heck shall I eat? All right, by this internet doctor, Mark Hyman. It was an excellent book. And what you don't see on my slide here, I kind of messed up the slide. It talks about in there being a pegan, P-E-G-A-N. And I said, what's a pegan? All right. Well, it's a cross, and we'll come back to that in just a second, what a pegan is. I 
He made it to the I Yes, I got a juicer and I did do my Krispy Kremes. Okay. Um, anyway, so, but I'm really curious in this group, what diet, so I figured at this point I needed a diet because I still kind of fat, all right? So what diets have you folks? Somebody over here, shout out a diet you tried. South Beach. South Beach. No salt. No salt. No sugar. No sugar. Yeah. Atkins. Atkins. Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers, now, yeah. No ice water. No ice water, okay. Ketosis. Huh? Ketosis. Ketosis, okay. Hey, we're doing good here. No alcohol. No alcohol. That's not one good. <laughs> oh, it didn't work. Okay, good. All right. So anyway, I went through all these different diet ideas, trying to study and learn what I thought was going to work for me. So we're going to try one more video here, and I apologize for the sound being a little low. There we go again, donuts. Right? Everybody is looking for donuts. So one of my fa favorite comedians, unfortunately, he's no longer with us. So I narrowed it down to several different diets that I thought would fit my lifestyle, fit what I do. As I started into this, it came to me that what is the one thing that's common about all diets? It's what you do for a while, then you stop doing it. Right? That's a diet. So my decision was, instead of a diet, I was going to do a lifestyle. Right? And for me, one of the most important things to my lifestyle was all the unhealthy stuff I was still was eating. The sugars were gone, but I was still eating carbs, a lot of carbohydrates. It's one of those techie things. Right? You know, I love my breads. I couldn't go buy an Auntie Anne's without at least two pretzels, maybe three, one for the wife and me. Right? I loved my carbs. So I knew I had to reduce how many carbs I was eating and perhaps change to better types of carbs. I also figured out that I better stop eating the stuff that came in a box. Back in America, healthy choice was my go-to weekend meal. All right? It was easy, it was fast, it was cheap, and I get myself a healthy choice. Now when you look at when I look at the ingredients in a healthy choice, I say, not so healthy. Also decided that I better reduce how many times I stopped at McDonald's. Again, back in America, I was there all the time, and I brought all those habits with me to Thailand. Right, except McDonald's wasn't as convenient for me to stop at, so I would stop at Big C at the uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I had chicken all the time. Lots of chicken. And where I live, they would deliver pizzas, so I had lots of pizzas. I wasn't going to make any headway if I kept doing that. My decision was, if I was going to change my lifestyle and live longer to enjoy my retirement, I needed to change and 
change what I ate. And I decided to eat what they like to call on the internet real foods. What I call it is, oh, grandma's meal. You know, this is what my grandma used to cook for me. All right? Nothing from a box. All right? She'd go out to the garden or go to the market and bring home things that she actually cut up and cooked. So we started doing this at home, making real foods. One of the things I mentioned earlier was pegan. Pegan is a slang term for being paleo and being vegan. Now paleo means pretty much meat eater. Vegan means pretty much vegetable eater. And I found myself saying, I really appreciate vegan because they get so many healthy things in what they eat. But damn, I like a steak once in a while. So I became a vegan with the caveat that when I had meat, I had healthier meats. We, will, we ordered from, we found a source in Bangkok, wild Alaskan salmon. It's nothing like you get at Big C, no offense to Big C. It is great. All right? uh, some of my friends have been out and we've cooked some. And it just tastes so much better and it's healthier for you. We also buy at Big C, one of the places, meat that they call grass-fed, not corn-fed. Corn-fed is when they put all the cows and they feed them the corn and the grains. Grass-fed is when the cow walks around before you kill it. Also found that I could find here pork that was raised with no antibiotics. Right? So much of our meat foods today have all these chemicals put in them to make them fatter so they make more money. Well, if it makes them fatter and you're eating these chemicals, it makes you fatter also. I heard somebody mention keto, and some people said, so you're doing the, the keto diet. I said, no, I'm doing a lifestyle. But it's modern a little bit after the food pyramid that people who are doing keto diets follow. And this is entirely reversed from what our the United States government and many of the governments promote. All right? No breads, pastas, absolutely no sugars, redu reduction in milk, no corns, beans, I sometimes have a, I'll say, yeah, some beans are great for you. But you'll notice that up there, it's kind of the reverse. You do eat your eggs, your dairy, eat vegetables, and vegetables are the thing that has made my day and made me skinny. Right? nuts and seeds. So it's a reverse of what our nutritionists have told us that have kept us fat. This is a little bit of an experiment. I started a few months ago documenting my weight every morning. So when I wake up in the morning, I, I do my bathroom break first, make me weigh less that way. Right? I would then go get on a scale, and on the scale I recorded how much I weighed. Anybody see something interesting in that? It fluctuates. All right. But you notice there's a few places on there where it kind of really comes down fast. All right. So let's talk about that come down fast part. Intermittent fasting is a scheduled eating plan that restricts your normal daily eating to a specific window of time. It's based on the concept of feast and famine. The same eating pattern that our ancestors followed, as opposed to the 24-7 non-stop eating habit that many people are guilty of today. <clears throat> so why does intermittent fasting beat other diet strategies? When you eat, your body spends a few hours processing food, burning what it can from what you just consumed. But when you're in a fasted state, your body doesn't have a recently consumed meal that it can burn as energy. Instead, it uses your stored fat as its primary energy source helping you trim down those nasty pounds. So how should you start? You can do ultimate day fasting. Fast for 24 hours, once or twice a week. Or here's a very simple technique. Try eating later and later into the morning until you skip breakfast and lunch becomes your first meal of the day. At night, stop eating at least three hours before you sleep. This restricts your eating time to six to eight hours as you fast for 14 to 16 hours per day. Start doing intermittent fasting at least 
once or twice a week, and then gradually adjust your schedule until you're doing it every day. What you eat matters when doing it during fasting. Avoid loading up on heavy carbs and choose moderate amounts of high quality protein and healthful fats. Stay away from unhealthy processed drinks and opt for pure clear water to quench your thirst. And don't forget, eat healthy on non-fasting days as well. So I added fasting to what I was doing for my health. And yes, fasting doesn't mean you eat fast food. My method was, as she described, the breakfast. I slowly got rid of my breakfast. So now I eat two meals a day with a snack in between. And I usually do it within a six, seven hour window of each other. So part of the day, I am fasting, part of the day I am feasting. There, is one, there are two exceptions to that for me. One is when I come on Sunday mornings here, I eat earlier than I normally would, right? because the holiday in food is so good. That was a joke, folks. <laughs> and on Wednesdays, I meet some friends for breakfast. So it's not something I stick to 100%, but it's one of the things I have done that has really helped me with my weight loss. Besides eating better things, healthier things, I'm also now restricting how much I eat. I used to be somebody that was, ah, oh, it's midnight, time for a snack. All right? Don't do that anymore, most of the time. The other thing that I found, the seventh thing I did in this, was I decided that I had become a couch potato. Now, Look at me. Look like I go to the gym, right? Yes. Yeah, thanks. No, um, I'm not a, gym, not a gym person, never been, probably never will be, but I do like going for a walk and take the wife out for a walk on her leash once in a while. I'm gonna pay for that later. <laughs> so anyway, I look around here and I see a lot of skinny guys. John? Where'd Ren go? There's Ren, skinny guy. A lot of skinny guys. So you guys are lucky, right? You're skinny? Maybe not. Maybe you're a tofu. Thin outside, but fat inside. Yeah. Food here is a metabolically healthy, obese person. NHL. Okay? There are a lot of animals. You see those? How much of you have to look at this guy's liver? Okay, so for my thin friends out here, do you know how healthy you are inside? One of the best things I did was in 2016, go get a health checkup. And I'm not here promoting any hospital. There's several of them that do this, health checkups. But I am promoting that you go find out how you are inside. Because right? how you look and act may be totally different. <laughs> I'll share just a little personal story here for a second. When I found out that I may have cancer, and then 
found out I did. I talked with my brother and his wife, and he said, oh, maybe I better go see my doctor. He, he's a year older than me. He went and saw his doctor. Turned out he had prostate cancer. He wondered why he was having trouble peeing and having these problems. My brother loved fast foods, was on the road all the time with his work before. He didn't change his diet. He passed on two months ago. A good starting point for you, if you have it, is go to one of the hospitals and get a checkup. You might be surprised. You may be perfectly healthy, but it's so inexpensive here, it's a good thing to do. And uh, club members, you get a discount. Right? There's some discount programs going on always. For those that want to know, or are curious, has this diet helped me? Here's my blood work from the beginning of the month. And I monitor my blood work from time to time. And for those that are in the lipid, okay, everybody knows about cholesterol, right? You'll see that my cholesterol numbers are looking pretty good. Because I'm eating vegetables and a little meat. My blood pressure also, on the bottom, 110 over 70 then. Do you know why I have better blood pressure than I used to? I got divorced and found a new wife, of course. <laughs> And before I move on, not to embarrass her too much here, but I need to thank my new wife. Right? She has been a lot of support in my changes to my diet. In fact, she tells me now, and I'm going to be, uh, she's going to so get me later, that when I go to bed at night, I don't make her into a pancake anymore. So let me recap. Since this is my story, let me recap the things that I did. Whether you do this or not is up to you. But these are the phases that I went through. The first thing was I taught myself. Got the books, got on the internet. YouTube can be your friend. There's a lot of good health information there. You need to be a little skeptical because on YouTube there, of course, are frauds and scams and people with different opinions. But it's a good place to look. Next thing I did was I got the toxins out of my life, including the ex-wife. <laughs> then I purged my home. Because, as Judah said, I have no willpower. I got all the things out of the house and away from me that I know I would go eat at midnight. I reduced the sugars I consumed. It was easy, no more Dairy Queen. All right, those type of things are pretty easy. But the hidden sugars, the hidden sugars I wasn't so sure of, and I still watch. Then I started to eat real foods. Foods you go buy at your market. All right, things that grandma and grandpa would have cooked for you. Real foods. I try to get organic if I can. If not, I make sure I wash everything good. And I learned a friend of mine taught me a little trick about going to the market when I'm buying salad stuff. Look at the leaves and see if they're bug bites. If they're bug bites on the leaves, that means a bug's eating them and there's not pesticides on them. Fasting. Fasting was probably the one issue that I was scared of doing because I thought I'm going to get hungry all right, and I can't do this. So I started with intermittent fasting. Then I moved to where I would fast for two to three days. And that's where you saw those big drops in my weight come from. Now my weight went back up a little bit afterwards, but each time it went down. My set point went down a little bit. So fasting was healthy for me. Don't fast unless your doctor says it's okay. Because everybody has different metabolisms. All right? But fasting was something that worked for me. I try to move my body daily, both in and out of the bedroom. And I now monitor my health. I go get my blood work drawn frequently. I've learned what my, my level should be. And I go get checkups. So my question to you that we started this with, 
Okay, what is the magic bullet to weight loss and health? Judith, you're good at answering things. What do you think? Eat natural foods. Eat natural foods? And Brent? Not eat too much. And not eat too much? Okay, Ren? There is no magic bullet. You have to construct a lifestyle. I paid I paid him to say that. <laughs> the magic bullet is you. You've got to find what works for you. There's a lot of ideas. This is my story. This is what worked for me that got me from being obese to healthy today. I still have a ways to go. I'm not quite to what I want for my weight yet, but I am doing what I enjoy doing, what I'm eating. Instead of food being a reward for me, it's now nourishment. If you have questions or if you need coaching, some, some help with this, feel free to email me. I'll be more than happy to reply to you. People that have already emailed me, I've replied. And I will give you some links. I have some, a few handouts. If somebody's really interested, please see my wife. She's got some handouts with some links and stuff on it that you may enjoy. And I guess we're at the point now of have questions. So who has questions? We're going to follow the mics here. I noticed in one of your slides you have something about food intolerance. Have you actually come across somewhere here that does reliable food intolerance? I know of one source. Yeah, yes, Judith, I have. And uh, I'll, this will be a little bit lengthy, but. I'll speak to you after. No, no, no I'm going to okay. make it quick. Okay. Um, We've had a presenter come a couple times called Dr. Pantley from Bangkok, Patea, and we've actually done the food intolerance testing. They take blood from you, all right? And we did that for my wife because she was having some problems, and the, the, the results, and I know some of the other expats that have done this, the results were very eye-opening. For us, we, we figured that the wife was gluten-sensitive and wheat and things like that, but we also found out that she can't eat egg whites. The egg white protein really upsets her. All right, so yes, at Bangkok Patea, Dr. Pantley, they do the uh, food intolerance testing. Um, I don't remember the cost. It's, it's a little more than I wanted to pay, but it was well worth it. It has helped my wife feel better. Thank you. Uh, excellent talk, by the way. Thank you. Uh, very interesting. I think a lot of people in here have tried some of the stuff. But uh, I just wondered what you do about your coffee, your intermittent fasting, et cetera. Black, a bit of black coffee. And, um, I love my coffee, but my coffee maker at home is broke. So not as much as I used to make drink coffee, but I love my coffee and one or two cups a day. If I'm out, I'll stop and get, but no sugar, no cream, just black coffee. Excellent presentation, Carl. Well done. But, um, I eat a lot of vegetables from the markets, and I know that Thailand uses a lot of nasty chemicals, and we have a farm up north and we just throw chemicals at it. So how do you clean the chemicals off the vegetables before you eat them? Water and vinegar. Give them a good wash. Right. And we actually, even though I, even if I see bug bites on the leaves and stuff, I still wash them. Right. Just a good wash. and. You know, you're not going to eliminate every chemical out of your life. We're in a chemical society today. But if you reduce your exposure, you're ahead of the game. Yeah, hi, Carl. Uh, good presentation. Uh, one of the things that I always wonder about is the use of palm oil in Asia for frying foods. It's in almost everything. And also, uh, we're in Thailand, so rice is an integral part of almost everybody's diet. How do you address those two uh, issues? The oils at home that I use, I use coconut oil, avocado oil. All right, those, I use the healthier oils that you can learn about. I don't use palm oil. I, I'm not a fan of that. I didn't like the taste. All right, so I know they cook unhealthy here. Um, and I was, I was really expecting somebody to say, okay, so you cook at home and eat, but what about when you go out? You do the best you can when you go out, okay? 
for what they're fixing. And I like to go to Sizzler because Sizzler's got a nice salad bar, all right, and they've got some good dishes. When we go other places, we try to say, hey, please, no MSG, no sugar. Sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. You know, it's a balancing act. As far as rice goes, if I took rice away from my wife, she wouldn't let me in the door. So we still have rice at home. All right? I have mixed emotions about white or brown, because brown has more of the minerals, more of the healthy stuff. But brown rice also has more arsenic in it. And at the local hospital, we checked the missus, her blood work, and checked my blood work, and we found out that the missus has arsenic in her body. All right, past the safe levels. I attribute a lot of that to the upcountry brown rice. Right. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. There's no way to know. But yes, you're going to eat rice, like many things, eat it in moderation. Eat more vegetables if you can. Uh, Carl, thank you very much for your great expose. Me, uh, something to this question. The doctors of absolute health recommend after washing the vegetables, leave them 15 minutes in water with baking soda. This is the recommendation by absolute health. My question would be, um, what do you do with the not visible fat inside? What do you do against it? Eat healthy, it will eventually go away. Mine has the, uh, I've gone and had a checkup on my liver and they've done the, the ultrasound scan and they said, no more fatty liver, it's gone, okay? It will go away if you change your diet. Well, um, we got your wife's arsenic level, was it significant? I, mean, I, I won't touch white bread or white rice. Uh, 67 years still walking. Um, what is your wife's arsenic level significant? In my opinion, yes, it was significant, and I hope she doesn't mind, but, but we're, we are getting that treated at Bangkok Patea. They're going to do a thing called chelation, where, where they help her get, the, get it out of her blood. Uh, we want it because it's for her long-term health. Uh, hey, Carl, oh, great talk. Um, actually, Christian uh, addressed my question. But uh, I went back to the States last year, had a checkup, just regular physical. Uh, I was in great shape, but the doctor said that I had um, somewhat, I had some fat on my liver. So my question was, you had mentioned diabetes, but what other implications are there involved with uh, the fatty liver and how you get rid of the fatty liver? But, yeah. the, the easy answer to get rid of the fatty liver, eat more vegetables, all right, all right. watch what you're eating, okay? Uh, the technical thing, you know, diabetes is one of the things that can come out. There's a lot of different chronic diseases, they call them, that can come from fatty liver. Uh, why don't we talk afterwards, because that gets into a rather lengthy talk. Excuse me, this is my name, Lara. Lara Sensu, okay? I stayed in America 30, 32 years. I live in Florida and Coco Beach. Um, you know, my, my, my grandpa and Dr. Earth, I know everything and he told me. You know the people have to know something to eat. I eat, I never had milk. My mom will give me six years or six months. My mom will go away. I never eat the milk for the cow, I never eat cow, I never eat chicken, I never eat the beef. You know, I eat all the lunch, my, my auntie to me. But you have to know to eat. Now, I'm 1950. I bought it. 1960. I'm the dad. 68. Right? I have tea for it. Everything you have to know to eat. And you eat, you think. One food, one thing, how many here? It's a toilet. That's the toilet here. Eat food. But you have to know to clean your body. You have to know to eat. My last food, Four o'clock, five o'clock. But my husband, he doesn't believe it. He eat what he wants. He's American. He's in New York. He meet me Coco Beach. You know Coco Beach? My son worked in NASA. Right? Everything to do. I'm a massacre. 
all the money I take in America in the world, snowbird come to the four down. You know, I learned three school, I know spa, I know everything. You see this my money? Now I up, keep up, right? Do that morning, you have to drink water warm. You know that my friend, she one and eight years old. Her birthday is last, last month. He drink warm water. His mother, 95, 96 years old. Water in the morning, warm thank, water. Thank, okay? thank you for mentioning yeah. about the water. I didn't I failed to mention that. Yeah. That okay. one of the things I added, okay, was a lot more water to, yeah. to my diet. And there was another thing, and, and thank you very much. Um, you're with with your your husband paying attention. Hi there. Okay. The one thing for me when I came here, I'm retired. I'm going to eat what I want, do what I want, do something that you know change my whole life. Today, my mind thinks a little bit different. I want to stay here longer because I'm having a great time. And for me to stay here longer, I got to take care of my health. Just a uh, quick question about fruits. Now you mentioned vegetables, but how about fruits? Or can you clearly eat too much fruit because the fruits uh, contain sugar? Just a quick comment on fruits. I have some fruits, but right now I'm working to keep get my weight further down, move down my set point. When I get a little bit lighter, all right, I will add more fruits back in. Fruits are good in moderation. All right. And what fruits makes a difference? I do make a, a shake in the mornings all right, for me, and I have it with my lunch usually, and it's using kefir. Did I pronounce that right, Brent? Yes. Kefir, all right, blueberries, blackberries, okay, in my shake. All right, so I do eat fruits, okay, but most of my, most of my meals contain a lot of vegetables. Thank you for a very nice presentation. Uh, I'm fortunate to have a Thai wife <laughs> who, uh, who watches my dad pretty well. Um, and she brought to my attention bran rice oil, which is extremely good. It doesn't remain in your system like all the other oils do. It's a little bit more expensive, but uh, we actually can use it like olive oil. It's, you can put it on a salad or whatever. But um, I was fortunate to, to meet her, and that's the way, the way my diet is, eating mostly Thai food. And most of the vegetables that we eat are steamed. So, yeah, steam, steaming is a great way, and that's what I do at home, is I steam a lot of my vegetables. And I really don't know about the oil you're speaking of. I, I'll drizzle avocado oil or olive oil over my salads. You need some oils for certain in your diet, right? but you need not to do, you know, this is something I never understood. They call it, you know, like canola, they call it vegetable oil. It's not made from vegetables, you know, but that's what they call it. So I stay totally away from vegetable oil. Um, a friend of mine has a mulberry farm just over on 331. I just, uh, Bought some today. Uh, you can come and have a look at them. If you'd like some, uh, then um, give me your name and address and I'll call the phone number and I'll pass that on to her. Uh, with a half a kilo of mulberries there. Okay. Quite nice. Uh, actually, where I grew up, you can't have these. <laughs> where I grew up, I actually had a mulberry tree. All right, so I'm very familiar with them. I love them. I used to make pies. But do you know the problem with making mulberry pies? Sugar. Yeah, we made it with lots of sugar, so I like your idea. Just eat them out of the container better. Uh, thank you, Carl. Uh, yeah, you're just right on track of everything I've heard. Uh, in America, I get my physical every year, and my doctor brought up about the DNA testing that they're doing now. When I'm 65, it's free, but since I'm just a year under, it's $2,000, and that will look at my solubility of vitamins cholesterol medicines and that. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that testing? Maybe I'll go back to America with my Medicare and get it. I don't know. All right. um, they offer they offer a DNS 
DNA testing here at Bangkok Patea Hospital, but it was outside of my budget. Um, it, it may be very interesting to know. All right. The thing, the, the, the point I will make from this was teaching yourself. All right. Being aware of what you're doing. All right. Like I have done is what has helped me lose weight, and now I feel I've been, become a lot healthier than I used to be. So I know we want to get, everybody wants to get out of here, and I saw they put the fire alarm on a while ago. That I thought that was my hint for talking too much. So unless there's a burning question, I, I'm going to leave. Uh, one, one more burning question, okay. Yes. Uh, what is the name of the company you order your salmon from in Bangkok? name of the company is Paleo Robbie. Uh, is that because of the P? Or P. P A L E O space Robbie. R O B B I E. You can Google it, and they 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 will ship. And what they do is they ship the potato. Everything's frozen. It comes in a big styrofoam box with dry ice in it, so it arrives frozen. Uh, the only caveat I will tell you is, for free shipping, you got to make a larger order. All right, but they, they do they do ship here, and uh, I've had great great success with them with good foods, all right, healthier foods. Not to give a particular company a plug, but that's your answer. Paleo yeah, Robbie. The, the second part of the question, uh, we have had uh, in the Penny City at that club uh, during prior years uh, a group of people who were interest, interested to join together to exchange ideas about healthy living uh, and things, all, all things related to health. If there is someone in this group who would like to lead that group, we would like to help you because we would have, like to have a group like that. We do what we call facilitation, and that means that we uh, type up uh, sign up lists. Uh, <laughs> I can only see the tall part of your head, but your hair looks great. Uh, at any rate, my point is that if anyone is interested in doing that, the club would be more than happy, really, and myself too, because I'm a follower of Good Foods, uh, to, uh, to help you all we can with the group. Uh, we can provide a, a meeting room uh, with all of the, the material, the uh, photographic stuff that you might need. So if anybody is interested, please let me know or another member of the board. Uh, the last my comment is, don't forget the nuts because almonds and walnuts are also good. They are fatty, but they do contribute good things to your health. Thank you. Judith, would you talk to him about one question at a time? <laughs> Thank, thank you all for the kind comments. Uh, I just have a few hands.